and welcome to another edition of FaceTime. I'm your host, Ramsey Abushal, and today we got a very special guest with us, Vancouver Whitecaps, Simon Coline. Simon, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, man. So you're 18 years old. Uh, most athletes your age are, are getting ready for the freshman year of college. Uh, but, you know, you're, you're heading into your third season as a professional. What's it been like? just to have that, uh, all that experience at, at such a young age? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's definitely taught me a lot. Um, being like the younger guy um, for the past couple of years has obviously like taught me a lot. Being with men, you have to obviously like adapt. It's not, not youth anymore. So I've had to adapt in, in many different aspects of the game, but um, it's been like a positive thing, I think. So I've enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, and uh, has it been weird at all just being younger than some of the, the rookies that get brought on from, from the draft or anything like that? Uh, a little bit. I mean, with with the people they bring in from the draft, I've, they're, like, sometimes not that much older than me. So uh, I'm pretty close to, like, some of the draft picks we've had. Um, it's more like the, the older guys who already have, like, families and, like, kids and stuff that are, like, maybe a couple years younger than me or something. That's, yeah. that's why it's a little bit weirder, but yeah. And, um, but I mean, when you first, when you first got brought up, uh, you weren't alone, right? There's, there's a bunch of other young guys on, on the white caps. Um, Alfonso Davies being one of those guys. Um, and he's obviously gone on to do two great things with Bayern. Um, yeah. What was it like playing with him? And, and were you able to kind of pick his brain to, to, to get some tips on kind of adjusting to the MLS as, as a teenager? Yeah, I, uh, I, I spent one season with him. I didn't know him too well before that, but um, I got to be in and around him for, for that one season, for his final season. And um, I connected with him a bit. Um, obviously, that last season he had it in Vancouver and in the MLS was, was quite the season. So, um, yeah, I guess seeing him on the training pitch, connecting with him, um, getting tips from him, like, he was not that much older than me, but he had a lot of experience. So um, I think for a lot of the younger players in the Whitecaps Academy, he kind of paved the way and um, inspired a lot of us. So it was quite a, quite good being with him because, you know, he had gone through what all of us young players in the academy want to go through. So Yeah, and, and being just on a team with a handful of teenagers, did that kind of make that adjustment period – uh, from from the uh, academy to, to the first team? Did that make it a little bit easier? Yeah, I mean, having some younger players there, it obviously makes it a little bit um, easier to be in and around the team with. Um, and Whitecaps has always done a pretty good job uh, in the recent years with having a lot of young players on the first team. So uh, it's, been, uh, it's been a smooth transition for a lot of us. And, and what was that transition like? I mean, uh, was there like a lot of rookie duties for you? Uh, was there like any hazing that was going on that, that you can share or, or anything like that? Uh, they, they made me sing a lot. I mean, like, <laughs> like initiations, like they always try to make us do it. Like even this year, like they just kind of make us anytime we go out for dinner in a public setting, it's like young kids, like you guys got to get up and sing or something. But uh, I remember my first year, they were talking about like shaving my head and stuff like that. And I was always just like, no, one, please, please, no. I remember one draft pick, they like, they made his hair look like a soccer ball. Like they left like patches everywhere. Oh, and I was just like, I ah, that cannot be me. <laughs> you got the so, golden locks, man. Yeah, exactly. I was <laughs> like, please can't do it to me. Uh, yeah. So let's, let's kind of take it through that, that whole um, uh, adjustment period. Was there, was there a veteran that uh, took you under his wing and, and kind of made things easier for you and showed you the ropes? Uh, that first year, there was there was quite a few players who I connected with. I was obviously only 15, 16 getting into it. Um, but there was like quite a few players who had like uh, veteran like MLS experience, like Kai Kamara. Um, at that time, we had Kendall Waston still. Um, so for me, like being a young player, I, those guys often um, gave me a lot of tips and stuff like that because I was very new to it all. Um, and still now, um, even this year, there's many players on our team who, who give me a lot of advice. Um, I connect with like Jordi on our team a lot, Jordi Reyna, because he's quite a, he's quite an experienced player. And so he, he's often talking to me and giving me tips and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, that first year, I'd say 
um, there was quite a few players who like just helped me transition really well um, and be confident in the environment that I was in. So, yeah, that's that's good to hear because because a lot of times um, you hear about you know the the bitter veterans that uh, kind of resent the younger guys coming up and and see that as someone trying to take their spot. Um, so overall, though, it's been you know a pretty open and accepting experience for you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'd say like like you said, I've heard of like some like veterans and stuff being you know like hard on the young kids but uh I think from my experiences like they're hard on you but they just want you to do good you know they want you to be the best you can be so they'll give you tips and stuff and they might might be hard on you here and there if you make a mistake but they're just trying to get the best out of you and make you become a better player so it's all good yeah uh, yeah so let's transition to the uh, MLS's back tournament uh you guys are obviously came off a pretty tough loss in in uh uh, in penalty kicks against the uh, Sporting KC. Uh, but overall, what was that experience like for you? Just obviously because it's like a, a super unique uh, uh, type thing that probably not a lot of guys have, have gone through. But um, just what, what, what was the whole MLS bubble and uh, life in Orlando like for you over the, over the past couple of weeks? Yeah, I would say it was just a, quite a, like uh, interesting uh, experience. I didn't know exactly how I felt going in there. Um, but then when we got there, I, I felt pretty safe in the bubble. Um, but it, it was all very like, uh, professionally set up and everything like that. So, um, just every day we'd wake up, um, and we'd often practice at night. So we'd just chill with our teammates throughout the day. Um, and we'd practice at night to, to avoid a lot of the heat. Um, but I, I quite enjoyed it. Even the, even just like the atmosphere of the games, like there was no fans, but, um, it was just like a very cool setup and stuff like that. And being there and seeing our team and being a part of it was, uh, was a good experience for me. Yeah. What, what was there, uh, for you guys to do in, in your off time? Did they have any like entertainment stations set up or, uh, were you able to, to kind of explore the campus a little bit or, or were you mostly confined to, to your floor and your rooms? Yeah. Uh, our team, we wanted to be like, um, like pretty safe within ourselves. So, um, we did a lot of things together. So we had a, a player lobby on our floor with like a PS4 and a ping pong table and stuff like that. So a lot of the players uh, spent time in there. And then there was a few uh, activities like outside. They had like a pool table, mm-hmm. um, ping pong tables, and then like a couple other games that you could play. Um, but those were communal ones, but they were always like being cleaned and stuff like that. So uh, some of us played on those sometimes, but um, yeah, we were kind of like gated in and like this, these like kind of resort area, but they, there was some stuff for us to do. So uh, towards the end of it, I was getting like a, a little bit like, I don't know what to do here anymore. Yeah. You know, it was a, a lot restless. of like sitting around. Yeah. But it was, it was still good. Yeah, so no one was sneaking out, uh, going to Atlanta for, for uh, so, some chicken wings or anything like that. No, no, there was, uh, our team was very like, uh, together, you know, we didn't want to have anyone go out or anything like that, or, uh, really interact with other teammates or other teams. So if we saw someone, we'd like, you know, stay a distance away just to be safe and stuff like that. So, uh, but yeah, our team, I think our team did well with that. And obviously a lot of the other teams did too, because they've, uh, they've all been safe there in the past couple of weeks. So. Yeah, and even even if they didn't, even if there were people sneaking out, you wouldn't tell me, right? No, <laughs> no, but there wasn't, so we're good. Uh, yeah, so before the season, you were able to uh, to travel out to to the Netherlands. Um, you did a training stint with with PSV, which is obviously you know one of the more uh, respected clubs from around the world. Uh, what was that whole experience like for you, and and uh, what 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 did you learn in your time out there? Yeah, it was it was an amazing experience for me. I think it really really opened my like eyes and perspective to to just how big the game is and and how um and how like yeah I don't know just how big it is over there and stuff like that um I enjoyed it quite a bit just I was only with um the academy teams there but even being with them just the pace of the game there the the intelligence of the players the awareness of them um was something that really stood out to me um yeah, but it was uh, it was overall a good experience for me. What were you nervous at all when you when you headed out there, or what was going through your mind uh, on the on the plane ride over? 
yeah, I, I didn't really know what to expect. I just knew I was going there to to have a trial and to practice with them. So um, I remember the first day, like I walked out and I was just like, I don't really speak too much Dutch, so I couldn't yeah. really interact with a lot of the players and stuff like that. But I remember I just went out the first day and the, the coach for their U19 team is Van Nistelrooy. And I was just like, I didn't even know what to say, right? Mm-hmm. I was just like, I used to watch this guy on TV <laughs> when I was younger and stuff like that. So it was, uh, it was quite quite an experience and um so so how long were you out there for because uh, i think I, I saw it was it was like a 10-day trial but how long were you in uh the netherlands for total yeah i was only there for i think just under two weeks um i just did a couple just just a week or so of training and some other type of testing and stuff like that mm-hmm. um but yeah they they uh throughout the week i practiced with them and then on the on the weekend, I got to watch a couple of the games. So I watched the U19 game. I watched the the young team, which is like their U23 team. Mm-hmm. And then at the end of the week, um, they took us to the uh, first team game. So I got to experience all the games there and see it all. So it was, uh, it was very nice for them. Yeah, were you able to kind of take in the culture or uh, see the sights or was it strictly business? Uh, it, was, it was mostly business, but the – the club of PSV um, was very good and they even took us to like when they took us to the game and stuff like that, they showed us a bit around the city. So it was nice of them. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'd wake up and then I'd go to training and um, eat, eat there and stuff like that. I'd come back and I'd rest up for the next day. So I didn't really uh, get to go around too much, but yeah. All right, cool. So, so now we're going to transition into the uh, hot seat section. So I'm going to just throw bunch of rapid fire questions your way and uh all right we can wrap up after that sound good sounds good cool so uh british columbia native correct yeah yeah so uh what's what's one thing that people need to know about vancouver and and british columbia because uh, i've never been there but i've heard only great things about it uh one thing to know about it's probably one of the best places on earth i think and what makes it what makes it one of the best places? Uh, there's everything. There's water. There's mountains. You can go biking, skiing. There's outdoors. There's downtown. There's there's a bit of everything. So we got everything here for you. Yeah. And uh, last time we we were with you, we did the we did a photo shoot out there um, mm-hmm. in front of the stadium and and then in front of some spots in in, in Vancouver. Uh, but we were talking and, and you're a big fashion guy, right? Uh, mm-hmm. so, so what, what's, uh, what's the la- any latest sneaker pickups or anything in, in, in your, uh, in your eyes, any collabs that, that you're, you're trying to pick up in, in the near future or anything like that? Uh, not, not too, not too many pickups. I mean, I'm a little bit into it. My parents, obviously, uh, they're on me a little bit. They, <laughs> yeah. they give me a, they give me uh they say I can spend a little bit. Right. So I, uh, I'm cautious with it, but yeah. I've picked up, uh, I've got some Yeezys recently um but besides that i've just been keeping it a little bit more uh calm for now yeah you gotta you gotta stay uh stay within your means right yeah you want to be on a espn 30 for 30 documentary about uh, athletes who went broke right exactly (laughs) yeah so uh who's who's the best best dressed player uh on the white caps uh for me probably jordi reyna he's got uh he's got some nice stuff yeah, do you, see, do you get any uh, pointers from him or, or anything like that? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll like, you know, he'll be eating lunch or something. I'll be, like, looking across the table, <laughs> checking him out. Getting some inspiration? Doing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How about who's, who's the worst, worst dressed player? Oh, worst dressed. I, I can't say that. I really don't know. I really don't know. It's been a while <laughs> since I've seen them. Yeah, true, true politician. True politician. Not trying to throw yeah. anyone under the bus. Um, all right. So when you were in the Netherlands, what what was the best and worst food that uh, you tried when you were out there? Uh, best food is like this thing called the croquette. It's like this mm-hmm. bun with like a, it's like some meat and some other stuff all deep fried. Yeah. Um, so that's one of my favorite foods. And the worst food, uh, I don't really know. I didn't eat anything I didn't like, but uh, my parents are from Holland and they always have eel. And I don't like that. So 
Yeah, I, just the idea, right? I mean, I I, I like um, uh, eel sushi, but um, they, when you yeah. think about it, 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 it gets a little a little tough there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, finally, just to wrap things up, what's what's the best spot in uh, Vancouver to eat for anyone who's who's traveling there? Oh, uh, I I really don't know. I can't say. There's there's a lot of good things. Oh come on, man! You you gotta you gotta pick one. If there's one spot. I'm I'm in Vancouver for the weekend. What's one spot that I need to to uh, to go to for dinner? Uh, there's a Italian place called Marcello's, which is really good. All right, Marcello's. Next time I'm there, I'll, I'll hit it up and I'll, I'll say uh, Simon Cola and uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, awesome man. Um, uh, any any last shout outs that you want to throw out there? Uh, I don't think so. Not All at right. the moment. All right, cool. So uh, thanks again for joining us. Really appreciate the time. Uh, signing off for Simon Coline and Urban Pitch. I'm Ramsey Abutrala. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.